Our guest uh, in, in this segment is uh, the king uh, in the Bonnie Stubblefield fan club. This is the guy. Yeah, right I've been displaced as You're a out. king. It's Ken, <laughs> Ken Apple. I, Bonnie found out last night Kim's going to be on. She became ecstatic. She's a big fan of the show yeah, today. She is yet. Yeah, and, he, and uh, Ken is the funniest man in accounting. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> CPA Kenneth W. Apple. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Bill. <laughs> Good morning. Good, morning. Yeah. Good to have you here, sir. Tell a joke, because you're the funniest man. Do some dancing. Yeah, a lot yeah. of pressure put on, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, hard, it's hard to be funny right out of the box, right? It he'll, is. He'll, he'll, I'm telling you, he's going to floor you before this uh, interview is over here. It's true. I will tell you, this is a true story, though. I, I, I used to do a lot of uh, pension plans for businesses, and when they adopted a plan, I would go and talk to the employees. And, and I told them this true story, that I, I went, to, went to work in my early years right after college, uh, for an outfit, and the first job they gave me was they gave me a broom and asked me to sweep up. <clears throat> and I said, well, I'm, I'm a college graduate. You know, th th there should be some things that, that I can do other than sweep a broom. And he said, oh, you're a college graduate. Okay, let me get someone to show you how to use that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. That's truth. <laughs> well, you know what, though, Ken? You know, you start with the sweeping, and you move your way up to vacuuming, and the next thing you know, you own the place. That's right. You own the building. Uh, yesterday, the IRS released some inflation-adjusted tax brackets, which means that, uh, one, you get a bigger deduction because it's in adjusted for inflation, and two, uh, you got to figure out what those new numbers are. So, Ken, what do you have for us? Yeah, so it was 2.7%. So I don't know what your listeners' experience with inflation is, but that's what the IRS determined, that they should increase the standard deduction in the uh, – tax brackets by was 2.7 percent from 2024 to 2025. So these numbers that we're talking about this morning will not affect the tax return that you're going to do for 2024. Ah. It won't be for over a year that these go into effect. What was the adjustment from 23 to 24? That seems like that would have been higher. That was 8.7 percent. It was okay. actually the highest that they've ever increased. And is that a rule they follow every year that whatever the CPI number is or whatever they base their inflation number on, that's what they adjust the brackets up by? Yes, and it's pretty much the, the same federal government wide. So if you're receiving Social Security, that's how they adjust your Social Security. If you're receiving a federal pension, that's how they adjust your federal pension. So all of those went up 8.7% for 2024, but they're only going to go up by 2.7% for 2025. Do they round those to a, like the nearest hundred dollar or whatever? They do. And coincidentally for 2025, rounding up by the hundreds actually rounded it up by the thousands. So it'll be a real easy for 2025. Your standard deduction for an individual is 15,000. If you're a married couple, it's 30,000. It's just double that. Uh, so that's a whole lot easier to remember than what it was before, 14600 I think it mm -hmm. was, it was, is for 2024. When the Trump tax cuts kicked in, that number was thirteen and twenty six, was wasn't it? Do you uh, remember? It was actually less than that. Uh, it was closer to 10000 for an individual. I see. So it's gone up significantly since then. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, it, it was 10000 for a married couple and somewhere around 5000 for a single person. Uh, when those kicked in in 2017 the standard deduction actually doubled for everybody. Okay. And then it was indexed for inflation after it doubled. And now it's up to fifteen and 30000 for a married couple. And so it a, will be a deduction versus a tax credit is defined as what? Yeah, so the, the, sta the standard deduction, the way I describe the standard deduction, is that's the amount of money that you can earn and not pay any income taxes on it. Federal. Okay. Federal income taxes, right. Okay. So the first $15,000 that any person makes, they don't pay any federal income tax on that at all. But you pay Social Security tax on it. De depends on whether it's Social Security earnings or not, yes. But if they are regular earnings that would be subject to Social Security, there's no deduction, for instance, for that, correct? Correct. There is no standard deduction when it comes to paying payroll taxes, correct? All right. So Social Security and Medicare taxes, they tax the first dollar of wages that you make. Yes. Okay. So no federal income taxes on the first $30,000 that you make? For a married couple in 2025, that's correct. But this year, that number is, 
you say 14-6? Yes, 14-6, and then it's double that for a married couple. 29-2, Bill, if you're going to bring up the calculator. Good. Very good. Yeah, Bill's impressed. I don't impress Bill that often. Once I in a am while. Impressed. Uh, but I don't know if I'm impressed with you or with Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Be impressed with him. He's I'm the impressed CPA. With Ken. <laughs> yeah. I'm just playing with numbers. So So once you have earned or collected as interest, dividends, passive income, retirement income, you know, all of that is mm-hmm. subject to that standard deduction. Once you have surpassed your standard deduction and they start taxing it, the first federal tax bracket is ten percent. And the width of those tax brackets has gone up by 2.7% also. So it gets adjusted all the way up the board every notch. So the the way that's supposed to work is if you've had a 2.7% increase in your income, then your income taxes should stay exactly the same as they were the year before. You say that's the way it's supposed to work. Does it actually work that way? It, it depends on each person's individual situation. That's the answer, by the way. Whenever you ask Ken a question, the answer is it depends. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it does it, depend. It does depend. Yeah. That's what Miss lawyers say, too. Mm-hmm. Whenever you – I have to say, in my household, when I ask a question, they're like, well, you know, that really depends. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, so for 2024, for example, interest rates on investments have skyrocketed in 2024 compared to 22 and 23, right? Mm-hmm. Because interest rates went, went way up. And people that had certificates of deposits, when when the term of that CD rolled off and they renewed it, it was much higher. So most of my clients are going to have double or triple the amount of interest income in 2024 that they had in 2023. So getting an 8.7% increase in my standard deduction doesn't help me a whole lot if I doubled or tripled my income from interest income. So what do you recommend then, Ken, for those folks um, so that they're not lambasted by um, huge tax increases? Ken recommends hiring CPA Ken (laughs) Apple, Tennessee (laughs) Avenue in Martinsburg. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Actually, what I recommend is making as much money as you possibly can because you're never going to be in a 100% tax bracket. All right? So even if you're in the highest possible tax bracket, I don't have any clients in that bracket, but you're welcome to call me if you're in that bracket. That would be 37% federal. And if you're in West Virginia, it's another 5% state. Now, what what do you have to earn to get in that 375 uh, about seven hundred and fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. So, Bill, you passed that some time ago. No, 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 no. That's why Bonnie says Ken's the smartest, <laughs> is the funniest man around. So. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, what are the what are the breaks on the way up? Do you have that information, Ken? Between going to ten percent to twenty two percent to twenty four percent to yeah, wh- whatever so, the other numbers are. So the the brackets are are kind of strange. I think uh, the first tax bracket is ten percent, and and Keep in mind, because this is the most popular question I get, uh, once you go out of the 10% tax bracket, you still get to pay only 10% on your income that was in that bracket. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just because you change brackets doesn't mean that your entire income gets taxed at the new bracket. You still get the advantage of the old tax brackets. 10% goes from what range to what range? So... Ten percent goes, <clears throat> and and you can just double these for a couple. So I'm just going to give you the single, and I'm going to round it. All mm-hmm. right. So it's twelve thousand to around fifty thousand. That's still ten percent. Right. And then when you go over that, your excess that goes over that only gets taxed at twelve. So the next tax bracket after ten is only twelve. But once you get out of the twelve percent tax bracket, everything you earn over that goes to twenty two percent. I don't understand why the jump is so big at that point. Because it's smaller from 22 on up. So it's 10 and then 12 and then 22 and then 24, then 32, 35, and for the rich folks out there, it's 37. That's 750 plus. Yes. For a married couple. No, for yeah. single, isn't it? Single. Well, that's, that's, that's the other oddity is when you get to the 35% tax bracket, the incomes are, are exactly double for a joint couple. But once you hit the 37% tax bracket, they're not. So an individual doesn't hit the 37% tax bracket until 626000 
but a married couple hits it at 750. Okay, I keep hearing that rich people aren't paying their fair share. Yeah. How's that possible if the rate is 37% on anyone over 750? Okay, so what I have, I, I hear fair share probably every day, and I have never had anyone define that for me. Nor I. Okay, so why don't we do an experiment this morning? Why don't we have your listeners define that? So I would be interested to know what your listeners think the absolute maximum amount of tax that should be paid no matter how much money you make. As a percentage? percentage. Yeah, as a percentage right. of the income. Pop it in the make. Facebook comment section. And what percentage do you think should be the maximum an individual is subject to in federal income tax? I think it should be relative. I think for Rob, it should be 37%. For me, it'd be about 10%. <laughs> it's all Rob. That's fair, Rob. That is fair. <laughs> I think it already is that way, Bill. <laughs> because well, I think all of us have a percentage in our heads mm -hmm. that, that we may not have thought about it before. But, mm -hmm. you know, if I only make twenty thousand dollars a year what's the maximum percentage you should take but but if i make ten million dollars a year god bless the guy that makes ten million dollars a year how much of that ten million should he pay in tax what is the fair share of that mm -hmm. no one's ever defined that for me well so i'd be interested to see what they think well ahead, and i Mark. think too i think what what you hear is that even if whatever the fair share is when they're paying 37 percent or what have you that there are you know incredible cpas out there that can protect them from um from paying that fair share in whatever way however that whether it be a cpa whether it be a financial fill somebody somehow so i think that's sort of the mindset of people that um, fair share kind of um, deviates from that because there's somebody who can help you not pay that. Um, but maybe I'm I'm off base. I don't know. Okay, no, I don't think you're off base. But you know, if if I have a bow and arrow and I have a quiver on my back full of arrows, and those are the arrows that I can use in particular people's places for tax savings, right? Ninety percent of the arrows that I have in my quiver only rearrange the timing for me to pay those taxes, okay? So if I'm in that 37% tax bracket, I have a few arrows in my quiver where I can defer some of that income into the future when hopefully I'm in a lower tax bracket. So that's how I'm saving money. But I have hardly any quivers in my back that will get you out of paying the taxes on your income forever. There's just not much that exists that, that you can do that with. Should there be a flat tax? Uh, depends again on who you ask. Okay, so flat tax sounds great. Uh, I tell you where we have a flat tax very close to here is the state of Pennsylvania. The state of Pennsylvania has a 3.07% flat tax, and if you make $100 last year, you own three bucks. Okay, there there is no minimum amount, and if you owe, if if you made 20 times that, you own 20 times that. It's a flat tax. And everybody says that's what they want, and that's what Pennsylvania has. And all Pennsylvania taxpayers complain because they don't get a deduction for <laughs> yes. their charitable contributions or their interest on their mortgage or their real estate taxes or you know whatever they're used to getting a deduction for, they don't get in Pennsylvania because they have a flat tax. So everybody says that's what they want, but they really don't. And, and progressive people who think that the more income you make, the higher percentage of that income you should pay. They don't like a flat tax at all because the multimillionaire is paying 3.07% just like the guy that's working a summer job. Bill, do you favor a flat tax? No, I, well, I can tell Bill didn't like my answer and he's going to restate the question. <laughs> See? Would you restate it? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, no, I, uh, flat tax. See, he's is, got you figured out. Yeah, flat tax is very, very attractive for the reason that Ken just said, uh, but there are groups that would have are very much opposed to it. Charitable organizations, for example. Everybody says, let charity begin in the home. People give in addition to their taxes. They don't do that. No, they won't. <laughs> they, they, they give because they get a tax break. Uh, so uh, uh, it would have a devastating effect on our charitable. Uh, probably other groups as well. The one that's clearest in mind to me are, are the charities, uh, charitable giving. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I was very interested in Ken's answer to that. I uh, it's very appealing, uh, but 
there's a real downside. Can we accept and accommodate the downside? Well, you know, in Pennsylvania, they don't tax retirement income. So you, you're going to get something someplace, but you're going to pay it back hey, the other somewhere place. else. Right? I mean, it, it, eventually, everybody has to collect the tax they need to keep the government going wherever they live. So whether you don't have a state sales tax or a state income tax one way or the other. And Pennsylvania property taxes are much higher than they are in West Virginia or Maryland, uh, for instance. So uh, that's another place. They, the reason why they can keep their state income tax at 3%, as Ken said, flat tax. Whatever you make, you pay the tax on. They also have a, a local borough tax or township tax. So usually you're paying another 1% or so. Uh, to the community that you live in, too. That local tax office collects that separate from the state or the federal income tax. The federal government really only has the income tax, or they're not. Do they, do they collect income tax? I mean, excuse me, sales tax, consumption tax? No, there is no federal yeah. sales tax. Uh, there's a lot of proposals mm. to enact one yeah. in place of the income tax. How do you feel about that? Well, I was going to ask you, how do you feel about that? Because you're the knowledge, much more knowledge than I am. But let's go to the state level. That is uh, frequently the case uh, that should we get rid of the income tax and go to consumption tax. Yeah, so I would be much more in favor of a national sales tax in place of the, the federal income tax than I would the state tax. And the reason is that we have borders with other states. So... If you eliminate the income tax in West Virginia, say, and raise the sales tax to 10%, you know, of our 55 counties, I think 32 of them are border counties. So everybody would just go out of state and buy all their stuff and pay the 6% sales tax that Maryland or Pennsylvania or Kentucky or Ohio charge. Ken, what are the next quarterly tax payments due? Uh, the, the last quarterly tax payments were due on September 15th. Uh, the next one, the last, the fourth quarter one, is due on January 15th. Again, I have, I have no explanation for why the IRS collects their quarterly taxes when they do. They collect the quarterly taxes for the first quarter on April 15th. That makes perfect sense to me. I've had 15 days since the quarter ended. I can calculate my tax and send it in. But the second quarter is due on June 15th, which is 15 days before the quarter ends. The next one's due on September 15th, which is 15 days before the quarter ends. But then the last quarter's not due till January 15th. I, I don't know why they're that way. I have a theory, but I don't know why. Uh, Would you share the theory? Well, yeah, what's your theory? The federal government's fiscal year ends on September 30th. So I think somebody in their wisdom decades ago decided, hey, if we make that payment due on September 15th instead of October 15th, we'll get that revenue in in this fiscal year. Hmm. And then I think the state said, hey, what about us? Our fiscal years all end on June 15th. Let's move that July 15th to June 15th so we get ours in in the fiscal year. That's my theory. Ken, uh, a couple of years ago, the Biden administration made a big push to hire additional IRS auditors to look at the the deep pocket individuals. Uh, two questions. One, and I'm not sure if that was ever implemented to the scale that Biden was proposing. You mean you didn't get an audit, Bill? I did not get an audit. <laughs> the second question is, did you see any any effect of that with your clients? Okay, so I'll answer the second part first. No, okay. uh, I've seen no increase in audits. The first part, I have to correct your premise. Uh, they were to hire 87,000 new IRS agents agents okay not auditors okay and what's the difference in this case so you can certainly there there's way more people working for the internal revenue revenue service who are not auditors than are auditors okay so that that's the way the national press took it and ran with it that they're going to hire 87,000 new auditors and they're all going to come knocking on your door uh, that that was not true the the IRS has been short on people for a long long time if you ever get a notice from the IRS and try to call them and talk to somebody about it, you, you'll agree with me that they don't have enough people. Okay, So a lot of those employees, which that that is in process as we speak, they're hiring people as we speak, most of those people are for customer service. There are more people available so you can get an appointment with the IRS at the local office quicker and that you can get a, a human being on the phone without waiting online for an hour until somebody answers the phone. Now, there will be more auditors hired also, but it's not going to be 87,000 auditors, okay? Uh, 
and I, in my practice, I've had very, very few audits from the IRS over my entire career. Ken, about three minutes left. What can uh, somebody do right now to help lower their taxes for 2024? Okay, so, so now is the time in 2024 to decide whether you're going to take this standard deduction that they're giving you or whether you're going to itemize your deductions because you always have that option. You can, you can say, no, I don't want the standard deduction because I think my itemized deductions are higher than the standard deduction, and you get to take the higher of the two. Well, if, if you're figuring that out in February because it's time to do your tax return, there's nothing you can do about it. You either exceeded it or you didn't. So October, November are the, the two months that I have all my clients gather up all of their itemized deductions for the year and see how close they are. And now we've got a month or two to decide whether to increase my itemized deductions or to maybe stop my itemized deductions and do, do what I was going to do charity-wise in January instead of in November and December. So that's kind of in with your question, Bill, that am I going to deduct my charitable contributions? So most people, their itemized deductions consist of their charitable contributions, interest on their house, real estate taxes, and their state income taxes. That's pretty much it. Uh, there are medical deductions that are allowed, but most people don't get any. Uh, if you're if you're to the point where you're spending enough on medical that you get a deduction for it, you're in bad shape. So it really comes down to charitable contributions for most of my clients. So let's say, that, let's use the 2025 number of $30,000 for a married couple. If I look at all my deductions and I'm at 24000 as of today, and I look at what I plan to make my charitable contributions because most people's charitable contributions are skewed towards Christmas time. Okay, that's when all the charities come out and that's when people feel charitable. So they make a lot of charitable contributions this time of year. So if I'm gonna make more than 6,000, okay, great, I'll stay on that path and maybe when it's time to do my taxes, I'll have 32,000 of, of itemized deductions and then I'll itemize my deductions. But if I've only got 15,000 at this point, then maybe I don't want to make any more charitable contributions this calendar year. And then in January, I'll write big catch-up checks to those charities that I planned on giving to. And then maybe I'll be able to itemize in 2025. Ken, how can we get in touch with you for more information, as they say? You can reach me at 304-263-8981. Bill said the uh, tie and shirt combo. Sharp. He's right. He, he does look sharp. Thank you. Purple Just about purple. as sharp as the information he's provided today. A good information, Ken. Bonnie, I hope you're happy. <laughs> Bonnie wanted jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for the joke at the beginning, but you he got wasn't a, ready. No, you got a joke at the beginning. Yeah, I got remember? a story. A story. That's and how jokes are told these funny days. Story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to put a brick wall behind him the next time. Let him stand up with a mic. He'll continue. <laughs> Hey, it's uh, 9 o'clock. This is Talk Radio, WRNI Martinsburg and TV 10. More to come.